The Philadelphia 76ers are officially reloading and retooling for another notable move. And it does involve two key players on the Sixers team that there is some cat maneuvering going on behind the scenes by Daryl Morey. First, we got this update late last night from Sham Sharani of The Athletic saying just in the Golden State Warriors are in serious talks on a sign and trade deal to acquire Buddy Heald. League sources tell The Athletic and Stadium. Warriors and 76ers have been in deep discussions working to finalize the deal for one of the NBA's best three-point shooters. So we know that was a bit of the Sixers all-in move at the trade deadline, a little bit less than people ultimately wanted and hoped to be the case and probably should be based on the results that we did see, but they did trade three second-round picks for Buddy Heald, and he was a guy who still showed flashes during his time in Philadelphia. Buddy Heald is a guy that was an all-time almost 76er that did not quite live up to the hype. It was a little bit like, you know, you have that dream girl, you've been shooting your shot at this girl forever, and then you actually get to talk to her going around, and maybe she's not quite that cool. That's a little bit what it felt like the Buddy Heald experience, but for what it's worth, I still like Buddy quite a bit, but he is a guy that I don't think his skill set was as clean cut of a fit here in Philadelphia, and I could very much see a world where he is excellent in that Golden State Warriors system. So I do like that this is working through, and the better part of it is the Sixers can allow him to leave to free, leave for free, while bringing back a little something in return here. That we did get this report from Jake Fisher, saying definitely sounds like Buddy Heald will be going to the Warriors tr traded player exception and the Sixers will net back second round draft pick capital this coming on a quote tweet to Kyle Newbeck's tweet that says would imagine a healed Warriors sign and trade would return a second round pick or two recoup some of what the Sixers gave up in the trade to keep him and keep him hang around for the opportunity in the market and there is another little twist that is tied to this before I get into Paul Reed who's a notable part of this equation but for Buddy Heald specifically this seems to have grown into a multi-team trade to help benefit all these teams in a maximum way and the part of that that impacts the Sixers most notably is this from originally John Hollinger here who writes why the end game for a heel transaction might be a five team mega deal and why G Santos might be might actually matter as something in return for the Sixers. So shout out to Sixers Adam who quote tweets this saying great point from John here. If the take, Sixers take on G Santos from Golden State in this trade, they could combine his salary with Paul Reed's and have a bit more appetite for taking on, taking back salary enough to get Brooklyn's Dorian Finney Smith, for example. So I'm not going to lie to you and say I'm an expert in all things G Santos here. He's a guy who I perfect to be perfectly straight had not heard his name until this very moment did look up a little bit of highlights he's a young player he does have a good frame a little bit of athleticism to him a guy would have taken a chance on and not a guy that I would be overly against by any means but certainly a dude that this is much more about the dollar figure connected and the financial flexibility that would be brought on by him being a part of this franchise here and to feed into that a little bit more we do have this report from Michael Scotta of Hoops Hype which connected a lot of dots in regards to what the Sixers next steps are so I didn't want to break this down he says Philadelphia is scouring the free agent market and potential trade op options to land another forward with Paul Reed expect to be waived or used in a trade, leak sources told Hoopsite. The 76ers have had exploratory interest in trading for Nets forward Dorian Finney-Smith, leak sources told Hoopsite, but nothing is considered imminent there. The team's number one, number 41 overall pick, Adem Bona, is expected to land a standard NBA contract and earn a roster spot with the 76ers, league sources told Hoopsite. The 76ers will also cast a wide net to fill out its bench and are interested in adding more shooting and guard depth. Philadelphia has an interest in Lester Quinones, league sources told Hoopsite. The 76ers were also linked to veteran Reggie Bullock per Kelly Iko of The Athletic. Lastly, Kyle Lowry is still a possible candidate to return, but the Suns also have interest in his service. So a couple points of note here. Number one, I want to start with that it does seem like Paul Reed is as good as gone here. That we do have that initial report saying that the Paul Reed expected to be waived or used in a trade. And then just a paragraph below saying the team's number one, number 41 overall pick, Adem Bona, is expected to land a standard NBA contract and earn a roster spot with the 76ers. It is not regular that regular that a second round pick just gets handed a standard deal right away certainly happens multiple teams per year but not i would say the norm with the dembona i will say the second that he was drafted that this is what it spelled out to me that he is very much cut from a similar mold as a basketball player as Paul Reed. Paul Reed a little more awkward and bizarre and just kind of his movements, his athleticism. Bone a little bit more of the traditional center that he is a guy I think Nick Nurse will trust more than was the case with Paul Reed. With Paul, there was always this instinct to do a little too much on the court. That is not quite the case with Bona. And the thing that I've heard from a ton of people throughout the pre-draft process is Bona's a guy with the highest work rate of any player in this draft class, which is a really appealing factor. He's a guy who wants it. He works hard. His motor is incredible. Really good shot blocker. There's a lot to like about him as a basketball player, and I do think that's a worthy roll of the dice. But I will say, the bigger factor here does have to do with Paul Reed's contract. And we know last summer that there was the restricted free agency period where the Utah Jazz extended the offer sheet 
for a three-year contract between seven and eight million dollars per year it is 7.7 that he's on the books for for next year but the key contingency in that contract is that the Sixers had to make it past the second or past the first round of the playoffs for those final two years to get guaranteed and obviously the gamesmanship here being that the Utah Jazz know they had no chance of winning a playoff series or even qualifying they knew that the Sixers did have a strong chance of that so he did kind of try and checkmate Daryl Morey a little bit there to see if you really want this guy but ultimately the Knicks took care of business knocked the Sixers out of the playoffs first round so Paul Reed back in the non-guaranteed category. And why that is such a key piece of information here that I'll acknowledge once again with this report saying that Paul Reed expect to be waived or used in a trade league sources told hoop type. What that means essentially is the Sixers can chop his contract off for 7.7 million and get that number off the books, which provides a little more flexibility there. And the other factor is any other team can do that as well. So you can trade him to a roster and that team can either take in Paul Reed, which I still think there is absolutely a place for him in the NBA. He's a guy who I do expect to get another opportunity opportunity even if Philadelphia is not maybe the proper setting for him but he is an NBA caliber talent and there will be a team with interest but if that is not the case this could have much more to do with salary and you just want to release the guy and free up that amount of cap space there so a key point to note there and the ultimate like thesis of all of this is that the Sixers are retooling and building for that next move here now we have a, cu- a couple clues for who this is I know Dorian Finney-Smith has been mentioned here he is a guy who does fit that caliber of like a power forward slash small forward type guy a dude that can guard on the perimeter high level wing there and a dude with a ton of playoff experience we also got this report from barry jackson here saying the 76ers have poked around on haywood highsmith which was also reported by keith pompey uh and caleb martin martin is still on the heat's radar but the math doesn't work unless the heat shed salary he could circle back to highsmith potentially heat with an interesting decision on its seven million or so under the second apron so that second apron essentially is really what the more or less hard cap is for this Sixers. I know nobody wants to call it that, and particularly in NBA circles. There are people who would fight me on saying that right there, but I do think that it's the closest to a true hard cap that we've ever seen in the NBA, and that is specific with the Heat are looking to avoid there. The short answer that means they're not going to spend more than $7 million, so if the Sixers can find a way to come up with that for a Caleb Martin, he likely could come to Philadelphia, and that would be a guy that is higher up on my list than any of the Haywood Highsmith or Dwayne Finney-Smith. I don't think Caleb Martin is a gamer, and you add him to this type of Sixers roster as a true switchable wing you're talking about the the two through four of the Sixers team obviously Tyrese Maxey at the one Joel Embiid at the five and the two through four looking like Kelly Oubre Caleb Martin and Paul George that's some of the athleticism and versatility versatility that we've had from a wing spot in throughout the Joel Embiid era and as far as I can remember for a Sixers organization and that is with some key pieces that have already been added to the Sixers team of course we do know the main piece in Paul George and what he brings from a production standpoint to the Sixers team we've also seen in addition to drafting Adem Bona, that there was an upgrade made at the backup center position with Andre Drummond coming in to at least challenge Paul Reed and now looking more clearly to replace him there. And of course, on a veteran's minimum, which I think will age as a better signing than people are giving it credit, but Eric Gordon here and the things that he can do for this Sixers team there. Now, with all the praise to that being a good signing, that does not mean I want Eric Gordon in the starting lineup for this Sixers team. I still think they're in the need of swinging for the fences and getting a deal done to get at least one legitimate starter that at this point in time, I think the starting lineup is Tyrese Maxey, Kelly Oubre, Paul George, Joel Embiid, and whoever you can bring in is that power forward type role. That is very clearly what the market, or what the Sixers are in search of on the market there. So I do expect that to be the case, but the point being here, farewell to Paul Reed, farewell to Buddy Heald. It has been a good run. I do wish Buddy Heald and Paul Reed each the best. Those are not guys that I'm going to have any hostility to. This is not a Tobias Harris situation. Those are guys who did play their hearts out here. We will always have that sec- or that game six performance from Buddy Heald. I know the win did not come with it, but he did change the game in the way that we really needed to see and had not for most of his Sixers tenure. So shout out to Buddy Heald there. And shout out to Daryl Morey to continue to work this margins here. There is still a lot to be done. Once again, to pull up the active roster here, just eight guys on it. And with one of those guys, Paul Reed, likely not being around next year. So truly seven players that are officially locked in and set for next year. I do believe that there is plenty more to be done at this point in time. So keep it locked in and stay posted right here on Sixers Digest. Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the channel to stay in the loop. I got you. I will keep you up to date on everything as things continue to break. I'll make sure to be on top of it. And I'm very excited for this Sixers team that is being built right now. So appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning into this video here. Make sure you drop it a like on this video and uh, any comments that you have below as well. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll be talking with you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.